Today we will learn histogram of uniform width. In a school, a computer teacher organized a competition to understand the student's typing speed in which the students were given 5 minutes and asked to type a text of English. Following information was collected about how many words students type in a given time. Due to large number of observations, they thought it would be appropriate to organize them into a grouped frequency distribution table as follows. Can you tell what kind of distribution it is? Think, think. Absolutely right. Since the class intervals are continuous, it is a continuous frequency distribution. If we represent these figures in a pictorial form, we can get information more easily. Let's represent these figures in a pictorial form. Can you tell if a bar graph would be appropriate to represent these data or a histogram? Think, think. Let me tell you, histograms are an appropriate means to represent continuous class intervals. Therefore, we will represent these figures as histograms. First, draw the x-axis and y-axis on graph. On the x-axis, we will take the number of words typed in 5 minutes and the number of students on the y-axis. Here, class width that is, class width of all class interval is same, which is 20 words. Therefore, we will take the scale 1 unit is equal to 20 words on the x-axis. Class intervals begin at 60 and end at 180. Since the first square interval is starting from 60 here, we do not have to show numbers from 0 to 60 on the x-axis. To show that we are not taking the numbers from 0 to 60, we will draw a king symbol on the x-axis in this way. Thus, keeping in mind the scale on the x-axis, we will show numbers from 60 to 180. To show the number of students, we also have to take the appropriate scale on the y-axis. Here, a suitable scale would be 1, so that we can properly represent the smallest number 1 and the largest number 30. We can take this scale for the y-axis by 1 unit is equal to 5 students. Since the numbers 30, 15 and 10 are multiples of 5, it would be easy to represent them. Similarly, we can do 1 unit is equal to 5 students. Taking this scale, and divide it into 5 equal parts of the unit which will help us to represent numbers such as 1, 4 and 22. In this way, with the help of this scale, 1 unit is equal to 5 students, we will properly represent other numbers along with smallest and largest numbers. By choosing the scale, we will show the numbers on the y-axis. Now. We will represent the frequencies of class interval with rectangles. The frequency of class intervals 60 to 80 is 30. So, we will draw rectangle for this class interval in such a way that the length will represent 30 students. Similarly, we will also draw rectangles for class intervals 80 to 100. Similarly, we will draw rectangles for all class intervals. The area of rectangle to be drawn for a class interval in a histogram is proportional to the frequency of that class interval. But here we have kept the frequency proportional to the length. Is it fair? Think, think. Let me tell you. We know that the area of a rectangle is length multiplied by width. Here, width of each class interval is the same. So, the width of rectangles to be drawn for them will also be same. If the width of rectangle is kept the same, then 
its area is proportional to its length. In this way, width of each class interval is the same. Then, the length of the rectangle can be taken in proportion to the frequency of the square intervals. This will also make the area of the rectangle proportional to the frequency of that class interval. In this way, we will get a histogram. Here, the data is classified as continuous frequency distribution. Since the histogram is used to represent a continuous frequency distribution, it does not contain distances or spaces between rectangles. As you can see in this histogram, there is no spaces between the rectangles. Various information can be obtained by looking at this histogram. The maximum number of children who can type 60 to 80 words in 5 minutes. We can see that only one student types 160 to 180 words in 5 minutes. When the class intervals have the same width, we get the histogram of uniform width. If the width of the class interval is not the same, then we get an histogram of varying width, which we will discuss in the next video. So today, we learned about histogram of uniform width. In the next video, we will discuss about histogram of varying width.